Hey guys, this is Adam with Adam Tech, and today we're going to be fixing this very broken PSP Go. Now there's a few things wrong with it. The first glaring issue is the screen that looks like someone dragged it behind their car while driving home one day. Uh, the next issue is slightly weirder. Basically, I can no longer access any of the system memory. This is because at some point the memory chip on the system has died. As you can see from that error code, I can no longer format the system storage. Half of the options are missing from the menus in the OS. And when you try to reset it in the system settings back to factory default, you basically get this little error code that once you Google it, it states, hey, your system chip's dead. Sucks to be you. You basically need a new motherboard. So today in this video, besides fixing the motherboard, uh, we're going to be fixing the screen. I figured we'd go ahead and get a new motherboard because to get to the screen, we have to get to the motherboard first. All right, let's talk about what tools we need. First tool is going to be a plastic spudger to pry apart things as well as to get those cable doors open. The second thing is going to be some tweezers to pull those cables a little safer than your fingers. And the last tool is going to be a screwdriver with a zero Phillips head. I have an iFixit one, but you don't have to have that one. The next one is going to be our new motherboard. It has a nice little quality assurance sticker on it. And the last thing is going to be our brand new shiny screen, which I do have a few figure prints on and I do apologize for. All right, guys, let's go ahead and begin with the repair. Remember, be slow. These are old devices and they can be fragile. First thing we're going to do is turn off the power as we turn off the power anytime we're making any repairs on any electronic devices. Now, if we flip it over to the back, you're gonna see four screw holes. I unfortunately only have the top right and the bottom left hand screw. That's because when I bought it, that's all I had. So we're gonna go ahead and start unscrewing these guys now. They can get a little tough to get out since they've been crammed in there for a little over a decade. All right, now that that's done, we're going to be taking apart these two top screws over here. That's gonna be holding in your volume rocker, your music button, and your brightness button as well. All right, once that's done, you should notice that it looks a little bit looser. You can actually see the clip holes now. So go ahead and take your spudger, go underneath one of them, and just start clipping it out. Clip it from the left or from the right side, either way, just to pry it up. After this, we should start taking off the back plate. So go ahead and grab your spudger. Again, if you don't have one, a guitar pick or your nail just works fine. And go ahead and start prying. Now there are gonna be a few clips in the bottom, as you see. So I went in from the side with my spudger in order to get that clip off. And there we go. Now we have the motherboard completely exposed to us. So the next thing we're going to be doing is taking off the battery. As the first thing you should always do is take out the battery in any device. This is going to help us prevent any motherboard damage if we accidentally cross terminals with our tools. Now again, I don't care as much because my motherboard is being replaced, but I would still remove the battery first in any device. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the top and bottom screws of the internal housing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove that ribbon cable that connects to the shoulder button just because the wire does get in the way of the left shoulder button. All right now that we have all those screws removed, we can go ahead and start taking apart our shoulder buttons. Be wary that you keep those clips on you as they are required to make the shoulder buttons work. Don't worry about turning them around too much because they do only go in one way. All right, let's take off those buttons. And then the next thing we're gonna end up doing is actually taking apart the bottom uh, housing that covers the charging port and the headphone jack. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take off the screws for the thumbstick and the headphone jack. The one on the right does actually house the headphone jack as well as the thumbstick. So I'll start with the left, go for the right. And now that your headphone jack is up, it's actually not one of the ones you pry up, so you can just pull it out. See, all good to go. Now for the thumbstick, that is one of the ones you have to flip open. So go ahead and flip that. Once you got it going, pull a little gently. That's a nice little white thumbstick. 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove that plastic piece that holds the wire straight when you open up the screen. Only one screw houses that. Once you get that screw off, I went ahead and used my tweezers to try to go through the hole to get the plastic off. That didn't work, so I ended up going with a corner. And as you can see how easy that came off and all the dirt and grime, this PSP has been open before. Next thing we're gonna do is remove that blue wire. I do prefer using tweezers so I don't accidentally break it. There you go. Now the next thing we're gonna do is remove another wire that's really small on there. How I did it was I took the pointy end of my spudger, stuck it in between the board and the wire, wiggled it a little bit so it didn't cause enough damage, and then it should just pop out as I also hit my camera. All right, so now that everything's off, the wire is off, thumbstick's off, all the wires are gone, we can go ahead and try to start removing the motherboard. What I do suggest is that you actually slide it up to make it just a little bit easier. There you go. And once again, I don't care about this motherboard if it breaks, but I am gonna use my spudger to carefully remove it. I at least suggest going in through one of the corners. But when you pick it up, be very careful because there is the screen ribbon cable. It's just a Lego style connector, so just take it off. All good to go. Another glaring problem with this motherboard, besides the dead memory chip, is the charging port. Once the camera focuses, all right, as you can see, there's about four or five pins completely bent out of place. Now, I still can charge the PSP, but I can't do any data transfer to it. As you can see, this is our new motherboard. Let me go ahead and look at it. Once the camera decides it wants to focus on it. All right, right there. You can see that there's no pins bent up whatsoever. So this motherboard's all good to go. All right, guys, almost there. Four more screws right there, 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 and there. Now, these are different size screws, so just make sure that you do lay them out in the order that you screw them in. All right, two more screws in the back housing, right there and there. If you do do this right, they will actually stay in the housing, but since this has been open before, I couldn't do it. Go ahead and lift it off. Make sure you put the D-pad back in if yours falls out like mine. Two more screws before we can get to our screen. Top left and top right. Now that the screws are out, we can go ahead and start trying to unclip the housing of the screen from the actual screen itself. I'm going to go ahead and try to use my spudger on this. It did work on my black PSP Go, so that's why I'm trying it now. I did give up on using my spudger, and I did grab one of my guitar picks from my iFixit kit. As you can see, when I compare it to my spudger, it is just a little bit thinner than my spudger, so it should work out a little better. Go ahead and start prying from the middle. Oh yeah, I can already hear it unclipping. Alright, so be very careful. There's going to be clips on the top and bottom. But the reason why you're being careful is because there is another wire that connects the screen to that little extension cable. So as you can see right there, right there's that wire. Go ahead and just pull up on it. It's pretty sturdy. Alright, now we got our two halves gone. That's the mid-frame. You can put that back. All right, so now that we have everything off, we can go ahead and start to remove our screen. All we're gonna do is push it in from the front. Nothing too fancy about it. I'm gonna be so happy when all those scratches are gone. All right, came off pretty easily. Kind of expected it to since the adhesive is a little over 10 years old. All right, let's go ahead and grab our new screen. Once again, I apologize for the fingerprints on it. We're gonna go ahead and lay it down. I just pat it down to make sure it was all in there. 
do make sure that the wire is on the left hand side. It can only go in one way. Now, I didn't put any new adhesive on my screen border. You can if you want, but clipping it in was a little bit annoying for me. So just make sure that you're holding the screen with one hand and clipping it in with another. I do apologize. I was trying to get the angle right for you guys so you could see it being clipped in. All right, hard to clip, all good to go. Now we're gonna take our PSP and start pushing in all the clips. Now that's all clipped in, we're gonna go ahead and do the reverse. So start by putting in those two top screws that's gonna hold the housing in place for the screen. Then you're gonna go ahead and pick up your midframe. Now there is a guiding hole and a little guide rod right there. Just make sure that the ribbon cable for the display does go in that little window. All right, and we'll start putting with the top screws. And then next we're going to be doing those middle screws. Remember these are size dependent, so do make sure that you put them back in the same order that you did unscrew them in. Now that that is all screwed in, we can go ahead and grab our new motherboard and we're gonna connect the ribbon cable for the display. Although make sure that you do turn around your motherboard to the right direction first. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and plug in that cable. With that plugged in, we can go ahead and start taking up these wires. So that way we don't have to unscrew the motherboard later. Go ahead and begin to clip in your motherboard. It may take a few attempts. With the motherboard now clipped in, we can go ahead and slide our PSP back up as we need to do so for the rest of the repairs. Next, we're going to be taking our tweezers and putting in our blue wire. There we go. You will notice that the ribbon cable is a little bit loose. Not to fret, once we put back on that plastic piece, it's going to hold it against the back housing. Just like that. The next step in this repair process is to put in our analog stick and screw it in. But before we can do that, we do have to put in this little black and orange wire right about there. I'm going to use my tweezers to get the first little bit in and then use my finger to push it in just like that. Now we are going to go ahead and put our thumbstick in first. Go ahead, pull back that black tab and push it in like so. All right. Now, as you lay it down, make sure the screw holes aligned. When you're putting in your headphone jack, it's just a simple push in. I just use my tweezers like that. All good to go. Now make sure that the headphone hole it does go on top of the thumbstick hole because when you screw it in, uh, that is what's holding both in place. All right, we are at the tail end of this. The next thing we are going to do is be putting in our shoulder buttons back in. So go ahead and start with the right shoulder button like so. Now the left shoulder button. And now we are going to go ahead and do those little brackets I was talking about earlier. They do only go in one way and there is only one post hole. Now this does take a little bit of finagling, but once you get it in, it's pretty much in. Let's grab our screws and screw back in our shoulder button brackets. The next thing we're gonna do is put in our cover for the charging port and for the headphone jack. This does just clip in. Just make sure you go ahead and align it properly the first time. It might be a little bit easier going with the headphone jack first. Now that that is all clipped in, go ahead and put in our screws.
Time to plug in the last ribbon cables for the shoulder buttons. Last few things to put back in. We're gonna be putting in the top cover for the buttons, as well as the battery and the backing. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the battery first. It's just a simple push in. You could just push it in with your thumb or use your spudging tool. But then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cover for the top. And just like the bottom, it does just clip in After that, we're gonna go ahead and grab our backing. Make sure you do push those screw holes underneath, otherwise it will not stay on. With everything put back in, let's go ahead and slide it up and we can power on our device. I do like to do this before putting in the last few screws just to make it easier if I have to get back in there. It does look like the screen's working so far and the new motherboard. Go ahead and put in your date and time. All right, after that's done, we can go ahead and see that we're back in the menu for the PSP Go. Looks like the last game on here is played in 2010. And as you can see, as we scroll through, we do have all of our submenus back, as well as a few bonus games on here. I honestly assumed that the motherboard would have been erased when it got sent out to me. So now the last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put in our final four screws. Again, typically there'd be six, but I only have two. So start with the back screws. And then we're gonna move our way up to the top, but make sure that while you're screwing it in, you are holding it in with your thumb, so that way the screw holes do align. All right guys, now that everything's put back together, back in its place, we're all good to go on this repair. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you did like what you see. If you do like what you see, go ahead, like and subscribe. And if you do want to see more videos, next week we're going to be jailbreaking this guy and seeing how far we can put it through the ringer. Thanks for watching.